first things first, you think the first step towards writing your business plan. There's plans you know, throughout life. Mm -hmm. There's vacation plans, wedding plans, right? There's career plans. And then there is a business plan. So what's holding you back? A business plan. Yes. What is holding you back is your failure to plan. Exactly. Uh, let's let's do the um, you know the actual putting pen to paper because mm -hmm. the pen is mightier than the sword. Come on now. The pen is mightier than the sword. When you write your vision and yes. let it be known, yes. there's something that activates your subconscious. There's something that connects, and you're taken seriously. You take yourself seriously, mm -hmm. and you read it and you know it, it's a live document. As you are alive and breathing, yes. so is your business plan. And we'll talk about how organically your business grows, and so your document needs to be updated from time to time. So let's get into it and turn the first page. All right, let's go. All right. So protect your business. Mm -hmm. Different ways you can protect your business is you can uh, have a patent, copyright or trademark all right so christine so what's the difference between the three okay so let's start with the patent mm -hmm. patent is an exclusive right granted by the state or province for the protection of your invention oh, very important okay. Okay. invention invention what have you invented right. um there's so many inventions around most you know one of the household inventions is iron board someone invented that iron board mm -hmm. you know um so you want to have if you invented someone new something new kudos for you if instead of hiding it in the garage burying it in you know in the backyard put a patent on it and it's expensive we'll talk about how you can you know do a, a quick and inexpensive way of, of proving that you actually invented uh, this product mm -hmm. or this uh, item, but that's what a patent is, something that's tangible. Very good. Right? It's an invention. Um, right, so the next definition, we're gonna go over to the trademark. If you're trademarking something, it's a word, it's a logo, like the what's holding you back logo. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, words that are legally registered or establish to mm -hmm. represent your company or you. You yes. trademark that, right? We have um, trademarks with, with, oh my gosh, Mercedes. We have trademarks with, we can go all day with all the trademarks that are out there. You can absolutely trademark your um, your logo if it's unique. Uh, you coin a phrase, absolutely you trademark that. Now you wanna go into the copyright as we move along. Mm -hmm. Copyrights, this is the, you know, sensationalized uh, lawsuits that you hear about in the news. This is an exclusive legal right mm -hmm. to the originator or the assignee, the originator to print. Okay, you're talking about books, publishing, um, articles, film, okay, literacy, artistic, uh, musical material. And you yeah. could understand how that is a wide yes. brush, yes. a very wide brush copyright your items the quickest way rob to copyright your item is to uh, write them down mm -hmm. um, make sure that they're in a sealed envelope put it in a sealed envelope print it mm -hmm. seal it and mail it to yourself wow. you can make it mail it to yourself you don't open that package but you know what's inside but that uh, in conjunction with the u.s post or the canadian post or wherever you are in the world post France, mm -hmm. Italy, that postmark is a, a stamp uh, that guarantees this wow. is the time and frame. So it's not bulletproof, mm -hmm. but it's something. It gives it some legitimacy. While while you're you know the, these these patents, copyrights, trademarks, are, they're 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 not uh, in no means um, inexpensive. They they do cost. Right. Uh, if you have something, you're onto something, you know that it's unique and it's yes. a gift yes. from God, 
that mm -hmm. it's and that's just something you want to protect absolutely as far as that so you go ahead and mail it to yourself okay. um if you're yeah all right thanks for sharing that updates update update mm -hmm. update 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 the plan you have to be agile all right Sometimes the window blow that way. You got to be agile. <laughs> I don't know how to navigate that. You know, right, right. So, so when you when you start a business, it's like when I'm watching Cool Runnings. You ever watch that movie, Cool Runnings? Yes, and, I and did. They're all bobsled. Yes, uh, bobsled. Right. <laughs> the Jamaican bobsled team. So they they are in this tunnel of ice. And the curve is coming, and as the curve comes, you gotta you gotta do that angle. Right, right. What happens if you don't do it? Oh, you're off the tracks. There you go. You're off the tracks. So keep on track by updating your business plan because gotcha. your business will take off, especially if it's good. Is your head will spin mm. how fast it's gonna grow, and that's a good thing. Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right. next page. Components of a business plan. So let's get into it. Right. Executive summary. We're going to revisit the executive summary at the end. And now follow me. It's the app. It's, it's a summary. That mm -hmm. first page of your business plan is the executive okay. summary. Right after a table of contents is executive summary. And so folks is going to, folks who read that to take the time to even say, oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to read Rob's executive summary. you got to be able to catch him. So the executive summary is written last. And I'll tell you why at the end. Okay. Although it's the first page, you're going to write it last. Gotcha. So we're going to park that. Go to the next page, business description. The business description is not always what you might think. Um, it's what started out with you. Yes, you had the idea. But your customers will tell you the purpose of the business. What it means to them is important. So combine what you, what you started out with your idea and combine that with feedback from the customers, meaning that you're, you're going to write a business plan with some feedback of what is your gluten-free chocolate chip cookies taste like okay um not only what it tastes like but how does it make your customer feel that's very important the outcome the purpose mm -hmm. of your product that um, motivates investors and also will motivate you as well right um so i hope that's clear Yes. Cool. Okay. Awesome. All right. So target audience. Well, uh, you're starting from scratch. You visualize who do I want to serve? Yeah. Your business is a service, whether you're, you're making cookies, whether you're providing a product you're serving. Mm -hmm. So in your service, who do you want to serve? You know what? I want to serve, um, senior citizens mm -hmm. actually want to entertain senior citizens. I, I think that's a, a great idea. So then you know your your demographics or ages X to Y, your um, genders, right? It's just a male, female, whatever gender you identify as, mm -hmm. you, you have a, a honing of the dem. Okay, so what's the area? Okay. Where do these senior citizens live? Is it a private home? Is it an estate? Where do they where do they live? And then you you go into such deep details um, of knowing what do they have for breakfast. Sometimes the, the target audience analysis, mm -hmm. Rob gets really deep. You know, my customers get up at five a.m. They work out. You know, they they drink lattes, short lattes with extra foam that detail as much as you can with the target audience and um that helps out next slide all right before we go to the next slide let me ask you a quick question so if if i if i hired you to do my business plan right i'm i'm the business owner uh -huh. so who's responsible for gathering this information information when it comes to the demographic research demographic research comes directly from the client's heart space who okay. they want to serve. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes who you want to serve, who you thought you would be serving, is totally different when you get into the business itself. And that's why the business plan is a live document. Okay. And it, it will um, change. You have to go agile with, with the curves. Case mm -hmm. in point, someone who has a mobile barbershop, 
Yes. Mobile barbershop, you think you're servicing um, adults. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're, they're too busy to, to actually go into the barbershop and wait. So they make an appointment, you drive up, and here you are um, in your mobile barbershop. Like, guess what? Ends up that you're servicing their children as well. Okay. So then you end up having um, barbers that will service adults and then others that will service the kids because they're in the house, they need a haircut too. But your idea was mm -hmm. to really service the dad, gotcha. right? Or or the mom if they, they have a short haircut. But what I'm thinking is, to answer your question, it's really the heart space of the client that I hone in on. Okay. And then we expand and do some research. I encourage them to hire a marketing firm someone who's going to support them with, with really getting into um, the nitty gritty. Okay, well, Stephanie, mm -hmm. thank you. Marketing and sales plan, love it. So chicken or the egg, which comes first? You have marketing uh, in order to promote sales or is it sales that really, you know, helps out the marketing because the more you sell, the more popular it gets and the marketing is needed. Oh. Great, great conversation. Yes. Uh, how do you develop your sales and marketing plan? Mm -hmm. You uh, annual review. Each year you're going to review or you should review your business plan. And I think it should be um, at this point, it, there should be some change. It shouldn't mm -hmm. be status quo. Hopefully not. As right. you know, you're growing and evolving. Um, okay. Quarterly assessments. Quarterly assessments of your sales and marketing. You had your targets. Okay, last quarter we did this. Did we over? Um, you know, did we go over our target? Under target? We on target? Uh, that's very important. And to find out the why. So market changes leads into the why. If you're bang on and you have you met your quotas, market um, changes still need to get ahead of the curve, right? You don't want to always ride the wave. You want to get ahead and jump the wave. So the wave of change that's uh, it's always happening. So googling. As you know, Rob, you're an expert of that, stalking your language. So the um, the fourth step is product launches. So mm -hmm. how do you launch the product? When do you launch the product is very important. So how and when? So your your marketing analysis will find out, um, help you find out. You know, not necessarily a competitor, but there is um, businesses out there that will complement yours. Is there a huge convention happening? that you can leverage off of the audience, everyone in one spot, or you can actually um, have a booth or something like that. So strategic planning is very important. Um, and again, the owners have to, uh, the business owners have to be engaged in, in that um, as they are signing off on a lot of these expenses as well. And business expansion, um, huge, and that's the goal, to expand the business. And I'm just gonna speak two seconds about hyper growth hyper growth if you ever heard about it then google it and let us know what you if you've experienced it there's um i guess it's um, my two seconds my two seconds are up never mind <laughs> anyway so the hyper growth mm -hmm. if, if you there you know some folks will close business because they don't have the capacity to serve they don't have capacity to make cookies fast enough just right. because of the hyper growth mm -hmm. and the infrastructure that's needed Marketing and sales can tell you all of that, let you know what's coming on the pipeline so you can prepare yourself. Um, and a lot of folks don't emphasize or speak about the reasons business closes because of they, they grew too fast. Mm -hmm. It happens. Okay. It happens. Nice. Okay. Turn the page on to operations and management. We speak all day, but this broadcast is only 20 minutes. Mm. <laughs> 20 minutes of your time, and we're committed to making that happen. The operations and management team. Pick your team. Very good. You're only as good as your team. Always pick a team that knows and loves things that you don't. Don't pick team. Don't mirror yourself because you're going to leave open spaces. So if you mirror yourself and you're the person who loves accounting, you got a gap, a huge gap there. You mirror yourself and you're the person who doesn't like um, sales or, or you're shy about speaking to someone, you're a behind the scenes person um, that's pushing the wheel, then you, you're leaving another gap. Is that am, am I making? Oh yeah, totally, yeah. It makes perfect okay. sense. Yeah, don't, don't mirror yourself when you're hiring it. You, 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 the only thing you'd want to mirror is passion 
the mm. person has the passion and the same drive, but absolutely not the same talent space or or the same um, same experience. You want that diversity um, in a certain level or diversity level. Awesome. Right? Products and services we spoke about, again, uh, honing into your niche market, honing into your product and distributions and logistics behind distributions, how you're going to reach your your, your target. So services, um, so again, that speaks for itself. They're a huge part of the business plan. Business plan, well, average business plan is about 20, 25 pages. Okay. Let's give your perspective of much writing. And the financial analysis is about three pages. It's out, uh, the fin financial piece or spreadsheets, as you can see, there's charts. It's going to tell you up to three years projection of your business. What does it look like today? Your expenses, your revenue, and it's not three years of one, two, three, it's actually 36 months. So you're looking at 36 columns. Um, and someone who's reading your financial um, forecast should be able to tell you whether or not they would want to invest or whether or not you're wasting your time, to be frank. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Analysis. So the final analysis um, articulates the, the final analysis articulates the actual financial plan that's usually spreadsheets or charts. So it just um, again summarizes the financials for the most part. So we have uh, two options. At the end of the business plan, you can have your finan uh, final analysis, or you can add your final analysis. We're going to go straight back to the executive summary. Okay. There it is, the executive summary. So we're back to the beginning, the beginning of the um, executive summary is now I'm going to pause there and and know this. Mm -hmm. Folks want to know who they're investing in. Right. The executive summary has to include who the owners are, okay. who the key stakeholders are. Who are you? Why should I? invest in you how many years have you had um what was the research education mm -hmm. right don't dismiss the fact that maybe you're working in an industry for x amount of years and you just had to step out on a limb um, to start your own business don't dismiss your career experience your work experience it all goes in and it's a part of your credibility okay Absolutely. so yeah we we have your self as the owner um, we have the marketing, everything that we spoke about and the sales analysis summarizes the executive summary and in a nutshell tells the reader why you they should invest in your uh, business. Okay. okay. Excellent. Excellent. Love it, Christine. Wow. 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 What a great presentation that you have just worked forth very thorough in your teachings and everything well that, that's not even everything but these are just most of the basic components of the business plan because christine is very thorough in everything in which she does and she's going to put a time a lot of time and uh, patience into putting a, a good business plan together so that make sure you have a good guide and a roadmap leading you in construction of your business and how you should format it and also looking to get those finances in which you need to establish and keep the business running. So here at the bottom of the screen is Christine uh, Allen's email address. And by all means, please reach out to her if you have any more questions or if you would like to hire her to do your business plan for you. And her email address is Christine at clearambitions with a S dot C A. So yes, please reach out to her and she will be more than happy to answer any questions in which you may have. And speaking of questions, we have a couple of questions that came into the chat. And one question reads, all right, so when creating the financial aspect of the business plan, are the projected revenue calculated for the initial startup for or for a certain amount of years i guess they're saying uh when you're doing the financial component of it mm -hmm. is that for the first year or years of the business or for the initial startup of the business 
it's for the projected three years in the future. So mm -hmm. it's a forecast where you are today, mm -hmm. and then we move it forward three years. Wow. So you're going to have um, estimates. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. And so the, the key component with the estimates is that you back it up with your past experience, okay. your market research, so your sales analysis, your sales projection, and it goes really into the nitty gritty of, okay, you said you're going to sell five cookies a month. Mm -hmm. How many customers, how many folks you need to reach out in order to sell the five cups? And, and what are you packaging them in? Is it Ziplocs or are you actually going to get boxes? Mm -hmm. How are you packaging? What's that cost? It's, it's that, and this is where the business plan, you're talking about plan to fail, uh, plan to succeed or plan to fail. This is where the business plan really um, gets you thinking. Yeah, because it's going to help you point out all those little things that you never might have thought about, but they're mm -hmm. going to be expenses at the end of the day. And if you don't have that calculated and know what your final expense is for your product or for your service, then how are you going to get the right price when you go to send it to the market space, you may be undercharging where you're not seeing a profit so that, that you're selling your products or your services, mm -hmm. you're not getting anything from it. So that, that def defeats the whole purpose. So yes, great, great, great uh, information, uh, Christine. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah, it was. Nice. So yeah, keep the questions coming. Uh, we are already over time, but uh, <laughs> we will come back into the chat and Christine will answer those questions for you.